we smashed the vibe with the rain. 300 BPM music, and we gave it our best shot. But we, we gave it the best 100 BPM. We didn't have any 300 BPM. We made we made them endure uh, 15 minutes of magma. Wasn't it amazing? Yeah, apart from magma. Okay. Uh, welcome to the Interesting Alternative Show here on Phoenix FM with me, Steve Davis, and... Me, Thomas Rodney. Yes. Hi. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, Brentwood and Billerickie's uh, favourite and only local community radio station. Uh, uh, and available online. Steve, we're here at your, uh, your weekly bread and butter at Phoenix FM, but it's only a couple of weeks ago now. You're at Glastonbury, so tell us a bit about that experience. Well, that was just amazing to, to even be invited to come along to, to Glastonbury was, uh, was a bit surreal, but we embraced it. And uh, I think apart from the fact that obviously there was an element of interest in the, the novelty value, um, it was sort of credible because we've been doing this radio show since 2007, I think when the station got its full time license. Uh, and you know, Carver's obviously is like a musician, so that, that in itself gives it credibility. But the fact that we've been playing sort of strange and weird music for that Long, means that when it was pitched to the Stone, Stonebridge bar they went yeah let's do it and go with the flow uh, and we had so many people turn up you know there was a lot of muddy people in that room 500 and loads outside um, a completely surreal moment for me uh, as, as nerve-wracking as walking out at the crucible in totally different ways but without sort of trying to promote the use of any uh, alcohol it was nice to have a beer before you walked out which is the, the fun part of things if you're DJing. And presumably you know you've watched Glastonbury on TV and heard so much about it over the years and how, how was the kind of overall experience for you? Well we, we were playing the day before the band turned up so it was sort of DJs playing on Thursday so everybody's milling around sort of just chilling and preparing for what bands they were going to go and watch but to even soak up the atmosphere was amazing and um, from my perspective it was, uh, was, a, was a, a, memory, a memorable moment really um, and, and then Suggs came on stage out of nowhere it was madness in more ways than one uh, and we just had a great reception and it will stay in my memory for a long time and on the strength of that the block weekend that started it off and the radio show we've got a lot more festivals lined up including tram lines in Sheffield so I'll be at the Millennium Gallery uh, on the 23rd back right close to the Crucible you, you, know, you couldn't make it up really it seems to me that um, you've, had, you've had so many things that you've enjoyed throughout your life like poker and chess and golf and phases but music seems to be the thing which was there probably even before snooker and is still there now so it's been quite constant. Isn't it? Yeah because there, you know, there is the, the you know, pe people have phases of fads and things like that and poker was, I wouldn't say it was a fad but a poker was the sort of flavour of the, the decade for a while uh, and, and I fully embraced that, still love the game and chess has always been part of my sort of that minor sort of interest all the time but the music thing as a, as a record collector and it's been my major hobby um, I suppose it was only natural that in the end I did something on radio um, the DJ thing is another story I don't think I could have ever foreseen that happening live you know actually DJing but then I'm not too sure we are DJing you know all we're doing we're putting a record on waiting for it to stop and then playing another record and apparently DJ's moved on you're supposed to beat match and mix them in together we don't do all that we're, we're old school we put a record on wait for it to stop then another one I'm not too sure what actually that is two blokes just playing records uh, uh, the, the impressive things to me is the fact that you you know you, 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 the, the music you enjoy is quite alternative but you're kind of at the cutting edge of it you know new music you know, you obviously started off with, with soul and then prog rock and now techno, you know, you, you kind of move with the times, haven't you? Well, I, I've tried to sort of like embrace the, the weird and wonderful out there and it doesn't often get that much of a, a viewing on normal radio, air, airing on, on normal radio. So I think the show we do is to sort of try and champion the, the smaller artists, the, the artists that are pushing boundaries in whichever direction. The programme said the music was quite avant-garde. They're not wrong. Comfort, and I love it. I always prefer Danish Taylor to be honest. 
Um, and I suppose if you went back in time, not going to put myself at all in the bracket, but you would have looked as a hero to John Peel. He would have been the person, if you were growing up, you'd go to his show to listen to weird and wonderful music. On BBC Radio 6, there's Stuart McConey. He plays the same sort of far out left field music that's out there and he's prepared to take a chance on something and people not liking it and turning off. So we do the same thing. Probably not so hurtful if people turn off on Phoenix FM at 10, 10 o'clock on a Monday evening. But we've got a small following and it's grown and it's sort of like, it's, it's getting to a stage where it's got a cult following. Uh, and that for us is, is nice because the champions of the show, the, the artists are the champions, they're the heroes. We're just the facilitators really. And when you, when you walk out on, on stage to do a, do a gig, how does that buzz compare to, you know, walking out into the Crucible or Wembley or somewhere else? Well, I mean, I used to know that when I walked out to a snooker table what to expect. That was my office. Uh, it's not been something I've done for a, for a while at, at the final stages of an event. So that was strange when you walked out when it got to the cutting edge. When I walked out for the quarter final against Neil Robertson, uh, that then all of a sudden that becomes a little bit, ooh, it's a bit strange. But back in the day, that was where I, I lived, out there on that table. The DJ and walking out to two decks and there's loads of people facing you, that's quite overawing. That's quite a strange experience. I suppose you will get used to it. Um, and I'm learning from Carvers because he's a natural showman out there as a musician. So he's jumping around all over the place. I'm learning a bit about that, but I'm just enjoying myself. So if the music takes me on the evening, I can sort of just bop along. But I'm not too sure I can be that demonstrative. It's not part of my nature. And where, where, does the, where does the new music you find come from? Do you go and see live bands or is it just come scaring the internet or where, where does the music come from? Um, <clears throat> well, if you know where to look, it finds you. Uh, and you, you know, Facebook group pages and, and rare, various forums. But I think you just keep your, your, your nose to the ground or your ear to the, the speaker and you will find like-minded music. And there's a lot more sites out now that recommend if you like this, you might like that. So there's all that going on. But you, you have to dig. It's, you don't use any shoe leather up, but you certainly click a few times. And, uh, this is good. What's this one? Carvers, what's this? This is Panzer Papa. Oh, yeah, I thought it was, yeah, yeah, this is good. Panzer Papa. Panzer Papa. Pan, Pan, Panzer Papa. <laughs> Um, and do you see this as like a long-term thing, doing the DJing and doing more of it? Well, I think we'd like to think that we could perhaps establish uh, sort of residencies in places around the country. I'm not too sure how long the music festivals will keep on going with it because you don't know if they, how much they like it. But if the phone keeps ringing, then great fun because it's, it's really enjoyable because it's a happy atmosphere. Everybody's up for it. So therefore, as long as, it, as, it, as anybody wants us, we'll do that. But it might be nice to have some smaller events around the country. And we were looking at the, the model that uh, Craig Charles has with his, with his soul and funk uh, shows that go around the country. And thinking we could perhaps do something on, on a slightly different uh, vein as far as music wise, but a similar sort of project. But, but we just go with the flow of it really, because it's not, it's not a profession, it's a hobby. Just finally, one question about snooker. Obviously, retired earlier this year, and is, it, is there something psychological which is which is kind of difficult to accept that and that knowledge that you'll never do that thing of getting ready for a match and going out to play? And is it is it possible to replace that buzz with anything else? Um, well, I, I don't miss walking out there um, uh, because that part of my career is sort of really full stop finished and um, part of the fun of it towards the end as we, we've mentioned already was the fact it was a team with my father and myself now that that's no longer possible I don't think I've got the same desire really so from that perspective done and dusted I don't think I could ever replicate any of the standard or the winning standard required these days so therefore yeah I could I could enter next year's world championship yeah, if I wanted, yeah, I could enter certain events. But really, the prospect of winning becomes harder and harder. And the same would be if Stephen Hendry came out of retirement. The same for Jimmy White, even though he's competing all the time, it gets harder and harder, even if you play to a decent standard. So I'm not too sure the amount of effort I'd have to put in would justify the performance. Yeah, I could still pop balls, do exhibitions, and, and knock them in for fun. But when you need to pop them, you've got to be all year on it, every day in the, in the snooker club, and that's becoming the way. So I don't miss it, and when I, when I turn up at the World Championship and uh, work for BBC, and I'm standing near the table at the final, 
I don't look and go, oh, this used to be me anymore. I just go, this is for other people now. I know the feeling, but I don't miss it.